Hello, and welcome to the first episode of my video tutorial series to teach you how to program in Java. Now, this episode will be oriented around environment setup and a Hello World program. So, one, you might notice that I'm on a Mac, which doesn't make much of a difference for any Windows or Linux users, especially for programming. There might be some things such as file access that I'll get to which I'll address when we get to it, but that won't be for a while. But the first thing we need is an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, which is basically a nice application to program in, as opposed to using text edit or Notepad or another um, text editor that you might use. Because unlike text editors, this highlights source code and addresses any errors or warns you of certain things in the source code, and it also comes with a built-in compiler. So what the one that we're going to use that I prefer is called Eclipse. Now Eclipse is one of many Java um, IDEs. There's another one such as NetBeans, but I prefer Eclipse because it's more lean and faster. So we're just going to go to Eclipse.org and go to Downloads and download Eclipse Classic for my Mac 64-bit. So I'm going to download that real quick and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and it just finished downloading. Now it comes in a tar GZ, at least for on my Mac settings. This might already automatically unzip in your um, downloads, but if it comes as that, just use Archive Utility, or if you're on Windows, use um, WinRAR or 7-Zip to um, unpackage that. And then what you should get is either a GZ or a tar or a folder, preferably a folder. We'll just wait for that to unzip real quick. Now what happens when we get the folder, what we're just going to do is um, move it to somewhere convenient, where it's convenient for us. Okay. I'm going to be moving it into my applications folder and if you want easier access, which you don't really need, you can move it onto your desktop or any other folder. I have a folder on my desktop specifically for programming, but that's a mess, to say the least. Now we're just going to wait for that to unzip, and we can get setting up the development environment. Now, you got the folder labeled Eclipse. The actual thing that's in here is the Eclipse.app. It wouldn't be a dot app if you're on Windows, but there you go. Now this is the folder you would get. I fortunately don't need it because I downloaded this earlier because you know I've been programming for a while and I have Eclipse in here. I just renamed it a Eclipse so it appeared at the top of my applications folder. I'll just drag it off, and put it down there. Don't need this anymore. Certainly don't need this anymore. And we can start up Eclipse. Does it take very long to start up? When it starts up, it'll ask you where you would like your workspace and Okay, here's what Eclipse looks like when you open up in an area that has absolutely no files. Just X out of the web welcome screen. <laughs> and then we'll go in the left corner, click on the arrow there, and we will create a new Java project. Now what we'll do, I'll probably be making a new um, Java project for every episode just so I can keep all of this stuff we'll be doing organized. Also for the you know first uh, few episodes we'll be covering mainly um, some primitive data about Java. And then after that we'll do some basic object oriented um, concepts and principles and get into um, classes. But first we're just going to start out with variables and arrays. But those are in the future episode. What we're doing today is going to be much, much simpler. Now the project name is just going to be, how about episode I, or 1. And I am using Java 1.7 as opposed to 1.6. Now for Max, there obviously is a big um, let's call it a controversy between Java 1.7 and 1.6 and Apple and Oracle and such, but simplest, easiest for now for our thing. We're doing 1.7, which also has a benefit, also has a lot of new features. 
from 1.6 that will benefit us in future episodes and tutorials. Okay, here we go. Now we open this up. You realize you know, it's a source folder in the JRE system library, which is Java runtime environment, which will have all of your stuff to um, actually program Java. Now, this is the source folder. Now, in all Java things, all Java programming, you'll need packages. You normally separate your thing into packages. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a new package. Now, what a package is, an actual in your directory, they're basically folders. Like right now, we could do MMC. Mainly, that's always my parent package. You don't need to know why. Don't worry about it. So we have MMC. There's nothing in it. So we're going to create a new class, and we're going to call it main. That's what I tend to call my main classes for any type of program I'm making. Just going to let that class generate. I'm just going to open that class. What I'm going to do is just quickly erase what's ever in the file and start from scratch. Show you how everything works. So, what happens? Here's a blank Java file. It's really just a blank file, it's a text file. But what we started with is package, which you can see as soon as I typed package in it turned purple, which means it's a Java keyword, and that's one of the benefits of an IDE over a text editor. Right now there's an error because we need a package. Our package happens to be MMC, semicolon. In Java, you end every line with a semicolon. It's their, how you end, it's their end line character. So now we have a package. Now in here we would put imports if we had any. We don't have any, and we'll cover that in a later episode. But then we'll do public class because we're making a class. Java separates every file. It's called a class. Normal files. And since our name is main, we'll do public class main. Now we have a main class. And what we need to make this an actual main class is put a special method in Java which will run automatically. So it's public static void main and the parameters is a string array and almost everyone calls it args. That doesn't really matter though. I'll go over what each of those keywords mean in a later episode but basically what it does is um, when you run this through terminal which we won't probably won't be doing at least for a very long while is that the string array that it passes as a parameter which you might not know what I'm saying you will eventually but it takes every parameter you put when you run it in terminal and puts it into here. So we can say like string par1 equals args0. I probably shouldn't do that. You have no idea what it is, but that works. But basically what we're going to do is make it say hello world now that we have our environment set up. The first thing to print something to the terminal would be you call system, which is basically the system. If you put a dot, the IDE will show you all the different thi all the different commands you can get out of system. And there's, you know, a lot of things, current time in milliseconds, exit and stuff. What we're going to be doing is system.out. It's one of the print streams, out print streams, which can print to the console. There's system.error, which means it would print to the console in red and signify that it's an error. But we're going to be using out since we don't want it to look like an error. And we'll do print line. Well, print ln. But you say print line. So what it'll do, what it'll do inside these quotes, it'll print to the console whatever we tell it to. So quickly we'll do hello world. We'll save it and then the console, if you can see my mouse, will be down here. That'll be the terminal output when we're done. So what we're going to do is press this button up here, which is the run button. Take a little while for the runtime environment to start up. And soon we should have the console Here's the console, and there's hello world. So, we made it print to the console. What we can do is paste this down here, change just the error, and say, oh no, error. 
And if we run the program again, it'll first print out hello world, and then in red it will say, oh no, error. That's basically it. Okay, now that we have our main project for episode one done, I guess we'll say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next episode, which will be covering primitive data types, which are types of variables. Okay, bye.